Okay. Looks like let's test on my phone and see if we're showing up yet. Hmm. I don't tear, dare touch anything on my end. I don't want to <laughs> mistake. No, let's see so far. If anyone's on live, say hi, give us a shout. I'm not seeing the video yet on my Facebook group, so let's just reload one more time. It might take a minute to, yep. to get started. Oh, here we go. Great. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. It's Carrie here from Artist Strong. You're part of our Facebook group, Becoming Artist Strong. Welcome if you are new to the community. And if you've been a longtime member, I am still happy to have you here, too. I'm really pleased to announce our very first How to Be an Artist Creator profile. And today I have with us the lovely Suzanne Redman. And I've mentioned Suzanne Redmond before in a little post before I gave you kind of some background about her. She actually has a series right now she's working on that I've been following on Instagram that I really like and I can't wait for her to tell you a little bit more about that. But she also has a really helpful podcast called the Left Brain Artist Podcast. And she feels it's her mission to help artists develop their left brain way of thinking to improve all aspects of their business. So thank you so much, Suzanne, for being here. I'm really happy to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here and start this inaugural chat um, on video. Boy, I'm not going to try to say that word very fast again. <laughs> inaugural. Yes, yes the first um, one. <laughs> uh, so, so tell us, when did you re first realize your interest in the arts? Well, I had an interest my whole life, but I never thought I was an artist because my sister could draw anything she wanted. If you said draw a bird, she drew a bird. And I wasn't like that. And so I thought, well, I must not be an artist. But I was always doing things. So I was always making candles and jewelry and uh, sand art. Do you remember sand art where you layered yes. colored sand in, in little glass jars? Yep. Um, so I did all kinds of things like that. And my sister really didn't do that much. And yet, I thought she was the artist. So I thought that I think that's kind of funny. Um, but I'm brave enough to call myself an artist now. And um, I've always done different things. And now I do, I've been doing some painting and collage. And I like to take classes of anything I come up with. I like to take classes. Um, I have ventured into the world of online classes where I've learned some painting techniques. Uh, and when I first started in the art world, so to speak, which was about 10 or 15 years ago in Palm Beach County, Florida, which is South Florida, where I live now, um, I was selling jewelry. So I was making jewelry and I did the whole art show circuit with the big tent outside, festivals, okay. selling jewelry. Uh, but the painting is really what I've gotten into um, in the last few years. And that's the thing that... Uh, I've been brave enough to try because it's different. I never had a background of never, never went to school. And so then talking about uh, left brain, uh, I went to school for accounting. So I'm, I'm an accounting nerd and an artist. <laughs> yeah. And we can be both those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so I've already hinted a few times about the wonderful series that I think you're just kind of wrapping up now on Instagram. Can you share a little bit about that work? Yeah, sure. Um, I have my mother's, I have a strong sense of the history from my mother's side of the family, because my mom is from Oregon. She was an only child. She had lots and lots of aunts and uncles, but hardly any of them had children. So she was just doted on by all these aunts and uncles. And consequently, she ended up receiving a lot of things when they would die because there weren't any, she didn't have a lot of cousins, even right. though she had a million aunts and uncles. Okay. And so I have lots of different things. And one of the things I have is a box of letters and cards that came to her mother, my grandmother. And these letters were written in 1918. So we're, it's exactly a hundred years ago right now. And I've had these letters for a while. My grandmother actually lived to be 98. And so she held them, held on to them for 70 years before she wow. died. And then my mother gave them to me. And they're so interesting because they're from another man. 
So they were written to my grandmother before she married my grandfather. He wrote them to her when he went to France in World War I. Okay. And he wrote her this letter, and I'll do the spoiler of the first one, but I've done, I think I'm up to 14. I'm doing collages using watercolor and pen and ink. And um, I've actually made copies of the letters, and I'm putting them on the collages. So that's my series. It's on paper uh, rather than canvas. I wanted it to be easy to do, uh, not necessarily quick to do, but something that I would definitely start and get all the way to the finish. And so I've posted one at a time on Instagram. Each collage is a partial, so a piece of the letter, because I can't fit the whole letter on a eight by right. 10 uh, piece of paper. Um, I'm actually using, uh, I'm using uh, cold press watercolor paper. Okay, nice. Let's start with watercolor as, as my background. And so the first letter is, is Lieutenant Roger Hitchcock writing to my grandmother while he's in France flying for the US in World War I. And he's so upset that she won't write back to him. And he says, why won't you write to me? Ever since I told you of my marriage, you just won't write to me. <laughs> <laughs> what? This man is married? And so it's, it's him begging for a letter. I don't know. It's a big mystery. I don't know if he was a suitor. I don't know. Huh. I don't know a lot of the details, but I think it's fun to um, imagine what it may or may not be. And it's been fun for me to do a little bit of research online and find out more. So I've Googled him. I've Googled his family members. Um, I've looked up what kind of plane he flew. I've looked up a lot of different things. So that's the start of it. I won't tell you any more spoilers, but you can find <laughs> it on my, it's on my personal Instagram account, which is Suzanne Redmond Art. Yeah, I love it. I think it's like I got chills even hearing it. There's such a kind of magic to thinking about story from family and history and, and knowing there's this kind of, you know, we don't know all of everyone in our lives, right? There's so much more dimension to people that even we know now and interact with on a daily basis that maybe, you know, we don't know the whole picture. And, and this, this story is such a wonderful kind of testament to that and, and has such magic today. So I hope people yeah, can take a look on your Instagram. Yeah, it does. And uh, the funny thing is, I've had these letters since she died, uh, probably 1989, something like that. Okay. Uh, so I've had these letters a long time. And I've always had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to do something with it, something, some kind of art. Um, I did not want to actually cut up the letters, use the real letters yeah. I'm in copies. So I still have the collection. They're in a nice little box. Um, so it's taken me a while to figure out just what I'm going to do. And I think it's funny that I finally figured it out exactly a hundred years later. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's even, yeah. That just makes it even better. Yep. It's, there's something very full circle about all of that. It's, it's right. really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been fun. Yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah. Um, well, so I'd like to also talk a little bit about your podcast. So let's switch gears here a little bit. Um, so your podcast is called The Left Brain Artist. So tell me, how did it get started? And um, kind of what kind of conversations do you have with creatives on it? Well, I, I have been in the art world for, like I said, about 15 years. And when I first started selling my jewelry and doing the art show circuit and all that, I joined a local arts group. It's called the Wellington Art Society. Wellington is the city that's right next to the town where I live. And so I met artists from all over. And I realized that I love advocating for other artists more than I love trying to sell my own art. So yes, I did the whole art show circuit. And if anyone wants to buy my art today, yes, go for it if you want to, but I'm not actively trying to sell my art because I'd rather promote other artists. So mm -hmm. I've gotten into that side of things. And I think that's because I have the left brain. I've, I have, you know, many years experience in the business world prior to me going into the art world. And I have met artists from all over the United States because I used to go to art retreats. I went to, have you heard of, <clears throat> excuse me, have you heard of Art and Soul Retreat? It's in Portland, mm -hmm. Oregon and Virginia. And I yeah. went there for about four or five years to take different classes. And I met artists from all over. And then I was meeting artists where I live in Palm Beach County, 
because I started helping with art exhibits and calls to artists and doing all these business things for artists. And I thought, well, how can I get the local artists to be known nationally? How can I, how can I promote them nationally? And how do I give a little bit more promotion to these national artists who may have been hurt? You know, you've heard of a lot of national artists because we all do Instagram and Facebook and everything, right. but you may not have ever heard them talk. Uh, or never seen them. I remember seeing an artist on Facebook who I'd been friends with for a few years and she suddenly posted a picture with her face and I I commented, how funny, I don't think I've ever known what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to start a podcast, which is basically an online radio show, if, if you want to think of it like that. Um, my son is... 23 and he is a comedian and he listen, listens to podcasts. So he was telling me all about podcasts and he said, you have to listen to this podcast. He knows we share the the love of movies and, and things like that, actors, uh, because he's an actor. So he said, oh, you have to listen to this one. You have to listen to that one. So he turned me on to it. And then the more and more I, th I, start, I started to think, that's what I need to do. That's what I need to do is start a podcast where I interview artists. So what I do is I interview an artist once a week. It's every Wednesday. Podcasts, for those who don't know, are free. So when they say find podcasts on iTunes, you don't have to pay for it like you exactly. do a song. So podcasts are free. Uh, the individual episodes. They're called episodes. So it, it, I don't have multiple podcasts. I have one podcast, but then Great. many episodes. The episodes stay online for a really long time. So if, if you come in and join my podcast now, and when I say join, that means subscribe. And so it will be downloaded to your phone every time a new episode comes. And again, subscription, subscribing, it's free. So, but if you come in today and I'm on episode 45, you can go back and listen to episode one and episode 10 and episode 20 because they're always there. So that's kind of how podcasts work. I started this in June 1st. I have 45 episodes because I also do a Friday episode, which is a mini business episode. So I, when I talk to the artist for about an hour on Wednesday, I take one thing that they mentioned relating to their art business. And I expand on it for about 10 or 15 minutes, just me talking by myself on Friday. So that's a combination of what I've learned from the artists talking about it, what I know from my years working with artists, and then a little extra research that I do. So examples of that are, uh, let me see my list. Um, I like the Instagram one that I just listened to. Um, I can't remember yeah. the name of the artist that was paired with. Yeah, that was, um, let me think, I have my, I have my list right here. <laughs> uh, so I, oh, I interviewed Maria Tritico, who is a jewelry artist, and she's down by me, uh, but she's getting known nationally. She's got some work that'll be in a New York City gallery in a week or two. Um, but she mentioned that artists can use Instagram and check out different hashtags. And I'm going, so some people know how to use Instagram, some people don't, but she said there's a hashtag called call for entry. And you can look at that and you can find opportunities to display your art or enter a show or enter a contest all over the United States and Canada just by looking at what's in the hashtag call for entry. So that's how she found this gallery in New York that was looking for art. So here she is down in South Florida, and now her jewelry pieces will be in a gallery in New York City, which I think yeah. is fabulous. That so is. that just, yeah, it just made me think, okay, people need to know this. Artists yeah. need to know that Instagram is the social media platform where artists go because yeah. it's visual. You can't do an Instagram post without a photo. Facebook, you can. You can, yeah. you can do a Facebook post without a photo, but Instagram... By default, you have to do a photo. So the artists have just flocked to it, and that's where they can show a photo of finished piece, a work in progress, a technique, um, and sh or the, a picture of themselves so people right. know what they look like. They yeah. do videos. So my mini episode was about Instagram, and I kept it at the 
intro level, I think, because um, this was for people who have never done Instagram. Well, and even as someone, I've been using it for probably a few years now, I thought it was still a really good reminder of kind of some of the steps you need to take. And, and even thinking simply about um, searching and following a hashtag that could give you information rather than looking for hashtags that just inspire you, which is what I'd been doing. So I'm following those that hashtag now too. And it's wonderful to see all these calls to art now that I would never see otherwise. And it so there is, it's kind of this fountain of information too that's available on Instagram that I I didn't really even think to look for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a, a call for artists is a technical term, call for art or call for artists. So if you haven't heard that yet, that is a real phrase that's used in the art world. And that's, that's simply the notice that somebody puts out saying, I would like some art to be put in my gallery. And, it, and then they have um, the guidelines. It may say you can submit up to three pieces, you have to do one photo, and the photo has to be 300 DPI, this size, right. whatever. Um, you have to submit by October 31st is the deadline. So it'll give all the details and I also did an episode on how to respond, how to find and how to respond to, call to calls to artists. Oh, right. Yeah, so look for that one too. Um, so another thing about my podcast is I have a website, which is just my name, SuzanneRedman.com. On one of the tabs, it says podcast, and then the two sub tabs are list of episodes. So you can see the entire list and you can just go through and say, oh, I've heard of that artist. Let me listen to that interview or oh that topic sounds really interesting let me listen to that but then there's also a section called show notes so a lot of podcasts will do show notes on their website so if i interview carrie for example so uh here's your sneak preview i interviewed carrie and she will be on my podcast on november 7th i will list all of her information on my show notes. So if you are a random person who's found my podcast, listen to this episode and you say, who's who's Carrie and what is Artist Strong? I've put links to all of Carrie's website, social media, her Artist Strong, everything, so that then you can go back and you can follow that artist, you can find out more. And that's where the promotion comes in. Yeah, uh, going back to the show notes page and I'll have photos of, of art that Carrie's made and uh, photos of different programs that she's had. And so I, I try to tie all the things together so that anyone can look at it and they can now follow that artist. So the idea is not that you follow me forever. The idea is that I'm introducing you to a lot of interesting artists and you're going to find your own people to follow. Exactly. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And when we're done with this live video, and hi, guys, I see several of you popping on to say hello, we're really happy to have you here. And there will be a replay available for those of you who pop on halfway through. Um, but when we're done with this chat, I'll go back in and um, above or below the video, I'll make sure I link to, to Su Suzanne's website and to kind of her podcast list page so that you guys can easily grab that and take a peek and see what other content she has. Yeah, let me say one more thing about podcasts. You can find podcasts through iTunes, but also through any podcast app on your phone. So don't worry if you have a Samsung phone or anything else. Um, you can find podcasts on Spotify, on Stitcher, on CastBox. And you may not have heard of those things, but those are simply podcast apps. So just go on your phone, search for a podcast app, and then you search for the name of my podcast, The Left Brain Artist, and that's where you find the individual episodes. So podcasts are, um, a, it's a confusing term. People don't know what podcast means, but once you're, you figure it out, they're pretty easy to find Exactly. Yeah. And once and once you start, it can be hard to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hit it with a tooth in the car. So I listen to them when I'm driving around and uh, and then I use my headphones when I'm going for walks outside. That's when I listen to my podcasts. Yeah, I love to do it while I'm painting. I don't sit there and listen to mine all the time. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> 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 I'm great one out there. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I listen to your podcast while I'm yeah. I'm working on my painting, but Good. yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's really nice, especially if you're in the middle of a painting or some kind of um, work where you already know what you need to do and it's more about execution. I think the podcast is a lovely way to kind of be learning something and taking something in while also helping you pass the time when you're in that execution phase. I think it's harder when you're in the idea development and trying to kind of come up with a new part of of the work. Um, but if you know the task and you can work on it, it's a great way to listen. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd love to know, um, out of all, you know, you said you've had 45 episodes so far. Yep. Um, what's kind of one or two big takeaways you've had um, for your own artist practice um, that's been kind of a big lesson or, or surprise from interviewing and talking to these people? Well, there's so many surprises. I'm, I'm just amazed at how creative the, the things that these artists come up with. Um, I'll mention, I'm going to mention a couple really quick. I'll mention this one artist. Uh, have you ever heard of the artist Carrie Schmidt? She lives in the Seattle yes. area. Okay. Carrie, Carrie moved to Seattle because she had an illness that forced her to live in a cooler climate. So she chose Seattle. Unfortunately, Seattle's very expensive and she wasn't able to afford a separate studio. So she said, well, I've got my home or my apartment or wherever she lives, but she didn't have enough room to make her art. She ended up buying a used uh, school bus and <sighs> painted it just like her paintings. And that's her studio now. That's and awesome. Like, that's genius. Yeah. Yes. And so I just love the way they the artist will come up with a solution to a problem. So not only is that her studio, but it's mobile. So she said, I can take it down to the beach and paint. I can take it to a park and paint, but she can take it to events and art receptions, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And she sells, she uh, licenses her prod, her artwork on products. So she can sell products right out of the school bus. So I think that is just the coolest thing in the world. But uh, another one I want to mention is I did a business episode, uh, two of them that were kind of similar. Episode two was about looking for artist groups, because that was where I found other artists was by joining the Wellington Art Society, which is where near my home. Um, and then I did a later episode called number 18 that I called find your art scene. And I think that artists Often we're, we're artists toiling away in our home or in yeah. a table at the corner of our dining room um, and we're by ourselves and we're not connecting. And we, we connect on the internet now, but we need to connect in person. And so that was the biggest thing for me was when I joined an art group and I met other people like me, um, they had monthly meetings. So I would go to these meetings and see people and they would have demos. They'd bring in other artists. And, you know, even if it was a person doing, um, you know, throwing a pot on a wheel, which is not something I do, I could still learn from them because exactly. they would their business or, or how they, how they're more efficient or productive or how they find buyers. Uh, so I love the idea of joining an artist group. And I, Definitely, it has helped me. And after I was in the Wellington Art Society, <laughs> well, this is kind of funny, because of my accounting and business background, surprise, they, I got on the board of directors. And surprise, <laughs> I became the president. And so I did run run the organization for a while. But then when I knew my time was was coming to a close, I wanted to meet artists throughout the whole county. And I keep talking about Palm Beach County because we're huge. We're, we're like the biggest county geographically east of the Mississippi in the United oh, States. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's lots of different art districts and different cities that we can get involved with. Um, so then I said, okay, I've been a member of the Wellington Art Society for a while. I want to meet artists from all over my county. So I joined another artist group. And that's when I started to find art receptions to go to. So that's what I mean by by finding your art scene get out there and go to the art receptions and, and have some cheese and white wine Yeah, <laughs> go exactly. out and meet other people and talk to those artists and say, well, how did you get your art here? How did that happen? Um, well, how did you take such awesome photos of your art? That's one thing I can't do. And you just talk to people and you learn so much. So I would say that's the biggest thing that helped me was joining groups and getting out there and just, just getting to know the people and, 
and you see people around town, you meet them at uh, other receptions. Back in September, we're kind of seasonal here. Our okay. season begins, our summer's a slow season. So then all the, we call them snowbirds, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Canada come down to, to Florida <laughs> and they start coming in September and October. And so yeah. September, we kind of had this kickoff weekend with, with four art events in one night, which is unusual, but they kind of all started at once. And it was so much fun to go to an art reception and you'd see all your friends and then, and then yeah. you'd say, have you been to that one yet? Oh yeah, it's fabulous. Okay. Well, that's where I'm going next. Okay. And then you go to the next one and you see more people and so great. You know, yeah, a lot of places will have art walks um, where they, it's like maybe third Friday. Um, so look in your own town and I would just say Google um, art studios, cultural council, art societies, art associations, just put all those combinations of words in there and find out what's what's happening in your own town. And then you'll really, um, I think you'll expand as an artist, the more artists that you know. I completely yeah. agree. That's really good advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, as a side note, and uh, kind of speaking about our left brain abilities, um, I wanted to make sure you all know, especially for those of you who have already joined the circle, Suzanne's actually going to share some of her left brain ability with us as well in the, in the coming year in the 2019 program. And uh, we're kind of still figuring out what we want that workshop to look like or activity, but she's got some expertise around artist statements and is going to share that with us in the coming year. So I wanted you guys to know that too. Yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, artist statement is important if you want to start showing your art in galleries or or shops because a lot of times they want to they want your artist statement and that's what they put on the wall like in a little picture frame right next to your art and that's the way that you're being introduced to the exactly. to the gallery yeah 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 so um i this is the very first episode um but i plan to ask this question to wrap up every conversation that i have now in the group um and so i'd love you to wrap up our inaugural conversation um with the question what does it mean to you to be an artist oh great question well i think for me being an artist means being bringing that artful view into all aspects of my life. So for me, I feel that I'm different. I'm different than the average Joe. And I think everybody should think that way about themselves. And I like to be different and artistic in all aspects. So it might be how I dress. It might be, it's often, uh, I don't know if you can see the, the jewelry that I wear because yeah. I, make, I make a lot of my own jewelry. Um, it's how I decorate my home. It's how I spend my free time. I love going to art receptions on the weekends. I love um, listening to podcasts and listening to the artists or listen, you know, podcasts can be any subject in the world. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think of being artistic, it means being an individual and yeah. n not being afraid to let people know what you're truly like and to be different. And I don't, I don't, I'm not different and weird and trying to put it out there that I'm a strange bird, but I'm proud that, that I will wear something that might be a little bit different than the next guy or that I'm, I wear a different necklace every single day of the week yeah. because that's me. I make jewelry and I love to exactly. do that. And so that's kind of all part of me. Um, my persona. <laughs> I love it. And I love that you yeah. say that. And I think it's a really good reminder to all artists in this community, because that's also part of finding our unique voice as artists is, is owning who we are as an individual. And the more we can own that in our day to day lives, it's going to show up in our studio and in our product as an artwork as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today live, Suzanne, and sharing your wisdom with the community. I really appreciate your time. Well, thanks for having me. This has been really fun. Yeah, this has been great. For those of you watching this or the replay, if you have questions or comments, um, feel free to continue the conversation in the comments. We'll both be around. Suzanne's part of the community in the in the group as well. So you can ask us both questions about anything or, um, you know, share some podcasts that you guys like as well. Um, and as I said, I'll make sure that Suzanne has, um, we have links to her podcast and um, maybe even some different podcast apps that you guys can use if podcasts are new to you um, so that you 
can check out some of her programming as well as her art. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for being here. Um, and we thank you for your time and hope you have a really good rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.